let's get more familiar with these theorems and principles let's take a look at this example so a 2ke box is released from rest at point p as we can clearly see from our sketch point p is five meters above the ground the box then slides down a smooth frictionless curved track pq as we can see in the diagram below let's take a look at the first question use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of the box when it reaches point q right so we are only interested in this part of the motion from point p to point q we are told that we need to use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy so that simplifies the problem for us so what are we going to say we're going to say that the mechanical energy at point p will be equals to the mechanical energy at point q mechanical energy is just the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy this is at point p and this right here is at point q right but the potential energy is the mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the height plus the kinetic energy kinetic energy is just a half mv squared this is equals to the potential energy at q so again the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height plus a half mv squared so what is the mass of the object at point p well the mass is conserved so that is just two cages uh, the gravitational acceleration that is 9.8 at point p the height is 5 meters so we're gonna go ahead and substitute that plus a half the mass of the object is 2 kgs right the 2 kg box is released from rest at point p that tells us that the initial velocity is zero so we're going to have zero squared right there because it is released from rest this is equals to the potential energy at point q so let's go ahead and determine that the mass still two cages the gravitational acceleration 9.8 but the height is zero at point q we are at the ground plus the kinetic energy at point q that is what's going to allow us to calculate the speed as the box reaches point q so that will be half the mass is 2 kgs the velocity is what you're interested in and we square that so let's take a look at this f multiplied by 2 multiplied by 0 squared will give us 0 so we can forget about that part now it's just a matter of substituting this in the calculator so 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 5 i'm getting 98 this is equal to obviously this right here will give us zero so we just have a half multiplied by two which will give us one so 98 is equal to v squared let's go ahead and take square roots on both sides when i do that i get 9.9 .9 meters per second being equal to v so there we go that is the speed of the box when it reaches point Q. We're just applying the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Nothing really complicated. So that is how we apply this principle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the question that follows. It's quite an interesting one. Let me show you. Right. So the box passes point Q and moves 10 meters on a rough horizontal surface before striking a barrier at point r at a speed of 4 meters per second so here at point r we have a speed of 4 
meters per second right let's hear what the question say use energy principles to calculate the magnitude of the average frictional force acting on the box as it moves from point q to r so we are choosing from those three equations let me show you i say that if the question says use energy principles you can use the network is equals to the objects change in kinetic energy or the work done by the non-conservative forces is equals to the change in the potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy and lastly mechanical energy is conserved right so the mechanical energy at point a is equals to the mechanical energy at point b so we can use this equation there's no problem there and we can also use this equation we can also use this one but like i've advised if there is frictional force if the system is not isolated don't use this equation it can still work you can manipulate it just a bit and make it work but i advise that you don't use that equation so let's go ahead and see how we can use these first two equations to answer this question right let me just erase this so if we use the work energy theorem work net is equals to the change in the object's kinetic energy how are we gonna find the magnitude of the frictional force let's go ahead and take a look so if we were to sketch a free body diagram for this object you will realize that we have the frictional force obviously we have the normal force and the weight and the object is moving in that direction the angle between the displacement and the normal force is 90 so the normal force is not doing any work same is true with the weight the angle between the displacement and the weight is 270 and cos of 270 is zero so the weight is also not doing any work on that object so the only force that is doing work is the frictional force okay so let's say that f net multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta is equal to f m v f squared minus a half mvi squared so there we go f net we know that the only force acting on our object is the frictional force so we're gonna have frictional force multiplied by delta x we have the displacement it is 10 meters so frictional force multiplied by 10 multiplied by cos of theta the frictional force is always in the opposite direction of the motion so we're gonna have cos of 180 the displacement is towards r and the frictional force will be pointing towards q this is equals to f the mass is still 2 kgs vf vf is the velocity at which it strikes the barrier uh, we know fully well that that is 4 meters per second so we have um 4 squared minus a half the mass is 2 kgs and the initial velocity at this point is what we calculated above right here it's 9.9 .9. so now it's just a matter of substituting that so we have 9.9 .9 squared so let's take a look cos of 180 will give us minus 1 so we have minus 10 multiplied by the frictional force this is equals to so let me just substitute the right hand side and i'm getting minus 82.01 let's divide both sides by minus 10 so minus 10 and minus 10 cancels out so the frictional force is equals to eight point two newtons so there we go we have the frictional force the frictional force is 8.2 
newtons and uh, that is when we use the work energy theorem like i said we can use the work energy theorem or we can use the fact that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the objects change in its kinetic energy plus the change in its potential energy so let's go ahead and use that equation and see if we get the same answer i mean we will get the same answer but let's just go ahead and do it so the work done by non-conservative forces the change in the potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy so we have one force that is doing any work and that force is non-conservative frictional force so the frictional force multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta is equal to the change in the potential energy so we have let's just see potential energy final minus potential energy initial right plus kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial right so the frictional force is what we are interested in the displacement is 10 meters and the angle is 180 this is equals to the final potential energy so from point q to point r the height is zero meters so we're gonna have two multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by zero that is at point q right then the what the height is zero at point q minus the potential energy at point r two multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by zero the height at point r is also zero right plus the change in the kinetic energy so we have f mass is 2 kgs vf is 4 like we deduced before minus f the mass is 2 kgs and the initial velocity is 9.9 .9, and we square that so this will give us minus 10 fractional force and this is equal to so as you can see this right here will give us zero so we just left with the change in uh, the kinetic energy um i forgot what the value was you know i think it's 8.021 or something but let me just go ahead and substitute that real quick so i'm getting minus 82.01 we divide both sides by minus 10 and again we end up with 8.2 newtons so there we go you can use the work energy theorem or you can use the work done by non-conservative force when the question says use energy principles